Hello, I'm Richard Merritt, and it's the first week of May here in New Hampshire Hostas. And behind me is a newly prepared bed that we're going to use to create a hosta garden. So as part of this project, we'd like to have your input. We'd like to make it an interactive project where you're giving us feedback, commenting on what we're doing, and giving us suggestions, topics you'd like us to cover. And the, the way you can do this is to go to New Hampshire Hostas Facebook page and write your comment in there, ask your question, or tell us what you'd like us to, to cover. The other place is the comment section uh, just below the YouTube video. For the next episode, we will have already installed a shed very near where I'm standing. So that will be a focal point, and it's something that we'll have to work around. Uh, many of you have sheds in your garden, so it's probably very uh, appropriate and interesting for you. And uh, we'll see what we can do to blend it into the garden. So before we leave you today, I'm just going to give you a couple of timely topics that uh, are appropriate for the first weeks of May. Something timely to be thinking about in the first week of May is making use of containers in your garden. Uh, hostas love to be in a container and they're great accent plants. In the southern uh, part of the country, a lot of hosta growers actually use them. Instead of putting them in the ground, they overwinter better uh, in a container. And uh, so they get actually better plant in a container than they do growing it in the ground. Uh, but here in northern climates, they're a great accent plant. I want to show you a different, couple of different options you have of using the hostas in your container garden. Uh, first one is just the, the regular way. You just put it into the, the pot and uh, get it at the right level, fill your soil in around it, and you can leave it in there for three, four, five years, uh, just fertilizing it periodically, maybe add some compost now and then. Uh, but it'll do fine and, and uh, for quite a few years without uh, outgrowing the pot. But another thought to give you more variable use of your container, especially if it's a prime spot in your garden, why not think about switching them off um, during the season? For instance, in the spring, in the same container, before it's hosta time, you can uh, plant pansies in the container. And then when your hosta starts coming up, uh, just bring it along, keep your hosta in the container for several years, um, and then take the pansies out when they're appropriate time comes and just stick the whole container in. Fill in around it. It's going to do just as fine. Nobody's going to know that there's pot in there. And then you have another option in the fall. You can take it out and, and do some mums. Same thing. Just stick the mum pot into the container. Another thing that you should be thinking about the first week of May is slug control in your garden. You want to be preemptive and put the slug control down before they do any damage. So when are they going to start being active? when the nighttime temperatures reach the 50 degree range. That's when you want to put it down. We have both a video and a written uh, document that's available that goes into more detail uh, on how to use iron phosphate to keep your garden clean. And just be preemptive so that you don't have that, those shotgun holes in your hosta leaves for the whole summer. Truth be told, my interest in nature is just as strong as my interest in hostas. Uh, one of my favorite things are the birds, and of the birds, one of my favorites is the Baltimore Oriole. So a few years ago, a customer came in and told me what she was doing to get them to come to her garden on a regular basis. She was feeding them orange halves and grape jam. And I've done it for three years now, and I tell you, it's one of the best things I've done along with the suet feeder. It takes about three years of doing it, or at least it did for me, to get them trained to coming, and each year, of doing it, you get more and more Orioles coming. Feeding the Orioles is a two-fold process. One is the orange half to slim down over a nail like that. And the other is the, is the grape jam. And I just put several spoonfuls. The only time you don't want to do it is when it's heavy rain. It just washes it away. Uh, but frequently I have to do it on a daily basis because there'll be half a dozen to a dozen Orioles coming now and uh, they, they wipe out an entire orange and the grape jam in, in one day's time. But there'll be other birds come to it too. Uh, one of the things I've noticed is that the immature red-bellied woodpecker loves oranges, uh, yet the mature woodpeckers don't go near it. So, Alright, so while we have you here today I thought I'd take you into the, uh, 
main retail greenhouse and give you a view of what it looks like the first week of May. Uh, if you've come to visit us, this is where you get to go through. You can see the signs designated them and giving you the height and the width and um, a little bit of help on slug resistance and sun tolerance. Uh, but if you put an order in with us, this is also where we're going to pull it from. Uh, we grow in houses out back and we bring it up here to, to sell it. So uh, you can see all the growth where you don't heat the greenhouses, but they're about one month ahead of what you would be outside. Um, the, the, uh, just the solar energy forces out the growth. But what I want to show you while I've got you here is the different pot sizes that we sell. That's probably the most common question we get. And I'm going to start with the, the starter plugs. That is a starter plug. That's a 35 millimeter starter plug of a Blue Umbrellas Hosta. Uh, that is a, a 1 quart or 4.5 inch uh, deep pot of Blue Umbrellas. The same pot, uh, basically one year apart in age and 40% difference in price. So this is the plug is 40% cheaper than the same plant one year older. So that's a decision that you can make. We don't offer everything in a plug, but we offer a lot of them. Uh, we also offer this year um, two gallon containers, and that is a two gallon container. It's from outside, it hasn't been heated, so it's not up very high. Uh, but that's another option you have, and that's in limited supply. In fact, we don't have too many left for this year already, but next year we'll have a bigger crop. So I just wanted to show you what we what the house looks like. Um, if you have more questions on the sizes, when you're looking on the website, just go to the link at the bottom of each description. For instance, if it's a 35 millimeter plug, the 35 millimeter is highlighted. It'll take you right to a page that gives you a good explanation of what the sizes are, the difference in price, and, and you can make your own decision which one you want to buy, if there is a decision. Sometimes we only offer uh, a variety in one size. So that's it for today. Um, don't forget, give us some suggestions on Facebook and YouTube um, so that you can tell us what you'd like us to address in the, the new uh, interactive videos that we're going to do for you. And uh, I'll see you next time. Happy gardening.